virus is sweeping the world. And even more than the coronavirus, fear of coronavirus is sweeping the world. And there's good reasons to be afraid. Already there are so many serious problems in the world, but this threatens to eclipse them all. Millions could die. The whole world economy could collapse, which could be followed by starvation and who knows what. No one knows what will happen, but it looks really bad. And we can understand that it must be serious because unprecedentedly, flights between different countries are being cancelled or governments are not allowing flights to come in. If there's even a suspicion, then whole towns, cities are closed down. If some, on a, someone on a ship is, has suspicion of being infected, then the whole crew and the whole, the, the whole uh, passenger, all the passengers, they're quarantined. <laughs> People are afraid. Why? Well, death. It's fearful, isn't it? We don't really know what's going on and what's going to happen. Uh, therefore, conspiracy theories are making the rounds. There's conspiracy theories about pretty much, pretty much anything and everything these days. Uh, was it a, a deliberate biological weapon planned? Who's, are the Americans doing it to the Chinese? Are the Chinese, they meant to do it to the Americans? All kinds of conspiracy theories, but they don't. Whatever the origin of it, it doesn't help us in the slightest. It's a problem and the whole human race is, is threatened. And there are, undoubtedly, there are so many expert, learned, experienced doctors and physicians and medical researchers in the world. Right now, as you're watching this, there must be thousands of medical researchers working hard day and night with the best of their ability, with all their skill and knowledge and experience, trying to find out vaccines, trying to find out preventatives, <laughs> trying to find out antidotes. But so far, nothing in sight. And the virus is spreading more and more and more. <clears throat> But you know what? The medical experts, however expert they may be, all the medical experts in the world put together, they cannot stop disease. They may stop some disease, just like smallpox used to be a, a major killer or a, a, throughout the world, now it's not. Scientists have discovered how to stop it but they haven't discovered how to stop disease. One disease is contained, more diseases come up. This is the reality. More and more diseases. It's, I used to hear as a kid, <laughs> going to school in England in the 1960s and 70s, how science is going to conquer nature. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Whatever our expertise is, however, however much we think we can, can, can control, nature has more horrors in store for us. And disease is only one form of them. This is a particularly frightening one. Now, you may think, well, if the medical experts can't help us, and all the politicians can't help us, and all the people with all the power and the know-how, they can't help us. Then how is this insignificant person here going to help you? Well, maybe we need some other kind of expert to give another perspective on the whole thing. The fact is, fact, fact, this is reality. You might die soon from coronavirus. I might die soon. 
whether or not you die soon from coronavirus or I die, I die soon, people are dying right now and you will die soon and I will die soon, whether it's from coronavirus or slipping and falling down and cracking my head or violent crime or flu or plain old age <laughs> we're all gonna die sorry if I sound trite but it's a fact that we don't generally take very seriously <clears throat> uh, the fact is that we're all gonna die and nothing's gonna stop that nor is there ever gonna come a time in when scientists will conquer all diseases. You conquer one and another arises. <clears throat> now our Christian friends, they say these are end times. By analyzing the Bible and making all kinds of uh, <clears throat> very uh, deep studies, they come up with the conclusion that according to the biblical analysis, Jesus is coming very soon. There are signs of, as predicted in the Bible, that the world will end soon when there's so much disturbance in human society. <clears throat> uh, and Jesus will come and judge everyone. And most of the people, because they're not good Christians or they don't belong to the church, will be thrown into hell forever. Forget coronavirus, that's just, that's just a little thing. You just die, that's all. But if you're going to be thrown in hell forever, well, that's a lot worse. Uh, of course, the Christians have been saying this for about 2,000 years now, that Jesus is coming and these are end times. Uh, and it's quite likely they'll go on for another 2,000 years if they still have people who believe what they say in 2,000 years or if we all didn't die in the meantime from coronavirus or whatever. <clears throat> but actually we won't all die because nature is like that. Not going to kill everyone all out all at once, not very soon. But in history, this is nothing new. It's nothing new that there are Pandemics. This is a word which is uh, going around nowadays. Uh, there's nothing new. There, there was the Black Plague in Europe at the in the medieval times. Not only in Europe, went all over the world, uh, and uh, it was predicted that. Sorry, it was uh, stated that up to 60 million people died which was uh, about, then of course they're not exactly sure how many people died, but they say up to 60 million and between 30 to 60% of the whole world population was wiped out. Phew. What about World, uh, world War I? That was pretty bad. So many people died in that, but far more people died from uh, a flu which went all around the world at that time, just started toward the end of World War I and became very severe after World War I and killed far more people than were killed in the horrors of World War I. Between 40 and 100 million people died from a flu. So this is nothing new, that there are diseases which kill so many people, and what to speak of, wars kill so many people, pogroms kill so many people. <clears throat> Just try to understand, coronavirus isn't the worst thing. The worst thing is thinking that things like this are the worst thing when we have to suffer in this world. The worst thing 
is that we think we we maintain this illu mass illusion that we're going to be happy in this world when it's a place of suffering that's the worst thing because that tie the idea that we can try and enjoy in this world that keeps us in this world, it keeps us suffering here, and instead of looking for the solution, this, this spiritual solution to go beyond birth and death, that is the worst thing, our, our ignorance in, in ignoring the solution and clinging on to the illusion. Death is nothing new. Death kills everyone. Well, that's really trite, isn't it? But yeah, it's a fact. It sounds. It might sound like I'm making almost a joke of what I'm talking about, but really, it's not a joke. What what would be a joke if it wasn't so sad is that people get so disturbed by the prospect that they may die soon. And it may be serious civili civilizational upheavals, uh, but they don't see that anyway they're going to die. We shouldn't, we shouldn't take it lightly. I mean, coronavirus, no doubt, it's horrible. I'm not, I'm not trying to make a joke out of it or say that people aren't suffering. Uh, it, there's no doubt it's horrible, but. The point is, there are so many things uh, which are horrible in the world. I mean, practically everything is. The fact that we, we, we get born, we die, we don't know what we're living for, and we have to suffer and struggle, and then at the end, the light goes out. And according to some people, it never comes back on again. Or according to some people, it gets thrown in hell forever. Phew. That sounds really bad. <clears throat> Well, one good thing, if there can be any good thing about this coronavirus and the fear that's being engendered by it, one possible good thing, now how can there be any good thing about it, is that it might or is likely to, if it does spread widely more and more, which we don't know, it might just all fizzle out. And then if it fizzles out, it might come back even stronger, as happened with the flu strain at the end of World War I. So we really don't know what's going to happen. That, that gives rise to a lot of fear. But one thing that's seen when there are such times where, when our complacency gets shattered, the complacency that, yeah, everything's all right in the world and we'll just go on with our daily lives and we'll enjoy ourselves and there are festivals coming up and there's some marriage coming up and this and that and we live a pretty complacent life and we think pre everything's pretty much okay. But then fear, fear comes and the, the reality of uh, untimely death comes and what happens then when people get so afraid they're going to die earlier than they, or the fear that they're going to die earlier than they thought they would, or, they, or they're, they may live while their whole family gets wiped out. What happens in times like this, just like during the Black Death, bubonic plague, different names for that, was that people became more religious. Now, some people would say that's a bad thing, some people would say that's a good thing. <clears throat> you might think I would say that's a good thing, but maybe not. If people just uh, if people just latch on with some blind faith to something which they think might help them, which really isn't going to help them, then uh, what's the value? It, it gives some kind of uh, psychological crutch, as people might say at the best. Mm. But uh, the complacency, the apathy, or the, the foolishness by which people live their lives not thinking that anyway we're all going to die, what the hell is... Oh, sorry, I shouldn't use the word hell in, the, in this context. What is, what is going on? Why, why are we suffering? Why, why are we struggling? What's the point? Why, 
What am I? I'm just a... What we learn at school is I'm a bunch of chemicals. A bunch of chemicals get globbed together, conglomerated together. And then I, th I think that I'm this bunch of chemicals and I go around and try and enjoy interacting with other chemicals in other forms. And then pff, it's all finished. And what's it all about? And why is there so much suffering in the world? Why is there not inquiry into these matters? So this coronavirus could be, could have a good result some good result. If people start to inquire into what is the nature of reality, is it just chemicals? We're just some chemicals floating in the universe, in space. We don't know why, what, when, how, what, what is it, what's it all about. In the uh, Sanskrit language, that is called uh, jivasya tattva jignasa. Human life is meant for inquiry into these subject matters. But people don't care. It's mass. Now there's mass fear. That is just another phase of the mass foolishness by which all of human civilization is conducted at the present time. There's so much inquiry into medicine and even philosophy and so many fields of science. But where is the serious search for understanding what is the meaning of life? Or even if people think they find the meaning of life, they just invest all their hopes into some uh, religion with a really uh, childish uh, and very illogical, unintelligent kind of theology, just like, <coughs> just like this theology that is very common, that the people who believe in our religion, they all go to heaven and everyone else goes to hell forever, to burn in hell forever. That's silly. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all except in the minds of the people who subscribe to it. But uh, you may say there are millions who subscribe to it. But mass foolishness, <laughs> zero multiplied by bi uh, billions, is still zero. There's nothing there. There's nothing tangible there. So it's good if we wake up to s apply our intelligence to try to understand reality beyond the eating, sleeping, fearing, having sex, that typifies the misled civilization. Ahara nidra bhaya maitu namcha. Samanya me tat pashubhya nara nam. In the Sanskrit literature, it is stated that animals eat, humans eat, animals sleep, humans sleep. Animals fear, humans fear, coronavirus fear is going around as faster than the virus. And having sex, the animals do and the humans do. What is the difference between the hu humans and the animals then? The possible difference is jnanena hi tesham adhiko visesham, jnanena hi na pashubhe naranam. Knowledge is the difference between humans and animals, the possibilities to get, to get uh, knowledge. Here, knowledge doesn't mean just massing of information about the world of eating, sleeping, mating, and defending all around us. Because the animals also have knowledge. Uh, they also know how to get their food, how to get their sex, how to sleep, how to avoid enemies or kill enemies. They also know. So, knowledge means Jivasya tatvijigyasa, to find out what is the actual meaning and purpose of life and what exists beyond birth and death. Without that, a human is just an animal, sophisticated animal, because a human eats, sleeps, mates, and defends, as does an animal. So we are all like animals going to slaughter. That is our situation. 
You see, of course, you don't see in the sophisticated Western countries, but uh, here in India and in other countries still, you still see packs of animals, uh, whether goats or sheep or cows, being driven, whole, a huge flock or herd of animals, and two or three men with sticks just guiding them. Uh, they're just being driven to slaughter. That's all. So we're like that. We're animal. We're like animals being driven by our ignorance, our foolishness, our desire to enjoy this world being driven to slaughter. And sometimes you see goats being driven to slaughter. Practically, they can they can see they're going to be killed. What do they do? They have sex, as if something to enjoy. <laughs> enjoy while you can. This is our. So we're like that. We're like animals going to slaughter, coronavirus or no coronavirus. This is our situation. <clears throat> coronavirus or no coronavirus, death is all around us. It's not only humans. Every living being is dying. Uh, humans have become very expert in killing, not, not only killing other humans, so much uh, so much of human energy goes into medical research, but a, lo a, a lot of human energy and some of the top talent, uh, top brains in the world are concerned with, with making uh, various kind of weapons for killing others. And it, it may be, including biological warfare. So much good intelligence is used for that, and humans we're, we're so much afraid of the, uh, the possibility of how coronavirus could wipe out civilization or kill us or our near and dear ones. We don't, we don't really care if so many people are dying in China, but we become damn afraid if people are, start dying all around us. We might even say, oh, let, oh, let the Chinese people die. There are too many of them anyway. <laughs> people may even think like that. They wouldn't say, I'm not saying that, but people may think like that because we're callous, we don't care. In human society, we're so, we're so proud of our advancement, we've become very expert in killing, very sophisticated weapons for killing thousands of nuclear warheads. America and Russia both individually have enough nuclear warheads to wipe out the whole world dozens of times over. What's the point? <laughs> What's the point? Uh, <clears throat> So, this killing, we don't see. But killing, 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 abortion, how many, how many uh, potential humans, potential Einsteins, potential saints are killed daily? How many animals, birds and fish are killed daily to unnecessarily Humans can live very well on a vegetarian diet. I've been doing so for almost 50 years. <clears throat> and I'm only one of millions. It's not necessary to, to kill animals, but just for the pleasure of the tongue, my pleasure. We don't care about the suffering of others. And lit literally millions. I mean, chickens must be killed in the millions every day. And they're tortured all their life prior to that. So what's going on here? Coronavirus? We're, we're afraid of how much we may have to suffer. Why don't we think of the suffering we're causing to so many living beings just for the little pleasure of the tongue? We fear, we fear the pain and the suffering. Why don't we fear the pain and the suffering of other living beings? <clears throat> so it's good if coronavirus, the, this fear, wakes people up to think, think a bit more deeply than just what do are, what are people think about, whatever, what's the latest on Facebook and YouTube and in the news and sports and fashions and sex and what the hell, ah, go deeper, go to de use your human intelligence while you've got it, well, we won't live very long, ah, uh, in why, why are we so concerned? If I was to die, so what? I, I may, you may say, well, I may take a different perspective if I get coronavirus. 
Well, maybe I would, but I, I would hope that the knowledge I've received all these years would, would keep me in good stead. I mean, it wasn't so long ago I had a horrible flu and I was down and out for several days, but I, by the grace of God, the, the knowledge that I'd received, I understood this is some, some karmic reaction that I'm getting and it, I have to suffer and it'll be over after some time. And, if I die, well, I die. I'm just one one little speck in a massive universe. Why are we getting so? Con Why do we take ourselves so seriously? <clears throat> we think we're so important. So I was talking about the knowledge I've received. This the, the Vedic knowledge, which I have been cultivating. I've been fortunate enough to be blessed with the opportunity to cultivate this knowledge. Throughout most of this lifetime, this Vedic knowledge, it gives us information of the, what is the nature of life, what is the, the nature of death, why is there inevitable suffering, uh, and how we can go beyond that suffering, how we can stop the suffering. We are suffering because we cause suffering to others. It's not just by chance. For every action, there is an opposite reaction. This is the Vedic knowledge. The Vedic knowledge teaches us how to go to the reality beyond death, beyond disease, beyond suffering, beyond repeated birth again and again and again, to go to that place, that reality, beyond all suffering. We all desire happiness. We're meant for eternal happiness. The Vedic knowledge teaches us that. It's all there in the Bhagavad Gita, the essence of all Vedic knowledge. Ah. Utishta Jagrata Prapya Varangdi Bodhata. This is from the what I just said is a, from the Upanishads, which means get up, wake up, and become aware of that great possibility which is available in the human form of life. <clears throat> All this Vedic knowledge is summarized in the Bhagavad Gita. It's a guide how to go beyond coronavirus and flu and smallpox and uh, harassment from others and politics and sports and wars and polio and pogroms and genocide. Bhagavad Gita is spoken by Sri Krishna the supreme knower of everything that is to be known, the supreme personality of Godhead, the supreme worshipable person, the supreme worshipable object for all living beings. Forgetting him, we are suffering in this world. And we become so afraid if this little life Boom, anyway, we're only going to live, what, 80 years or something. This little life, boom, is going to be finished sooner. Let's wake up to a bigger reality. We are spiritual beings by nature. We all have our eternal, spiritual, real relationship beyond birth and death in relationship with Sri Krishna. It's all described in Bhagavad Gita. You can read it, find out for yourself. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.